Well, it's March, and the icebergs are still washing into shore here at the cabin. It must be time for an indoor cabin project. Hi, everybody. This week we got a little indoor home improvement project, which is a good thing because in the middle of March it's still pretty cold outside. And my wife put in another order for uh, a little dress-up, a little window treatment uh, dress-up up at the cabin. Uh, up there we've got just basic window treatments, mini blinds, and she was looking for some sort of a balance uh, to dress those windows up. So we're going to make those out of 1x8 pine. And this isn't the premium select stuff. We're trying to keep the cost down and keep it simple. Every project we do here at the Family Woodworker is simple and stuff that you can do. Um, and you're going to see some knots and occasionally a little bit of a, a pit that we're going to need to fill. But these are going to be painted so that's okay. And also this pine isn't that heavy, so it'll be just fine for hanging up over the windows. So uh, it'll be a fun little project. It dresses up the windows, so uh, stick with us and we'll put these together. So first things first, I'm going to take about a quarter inch off of each one of these boards because these are, you know, straight from the lumber yard and they've got rough edges. And after that quarter inch, we'll measure out the full length of the valance. And what I'm going to do is add an inch and a half to the overall length because the dimensions that I took were uh, for the inside dimension. In other words, the valance needs to cover the mini blinds. So here I'm just taking off that quarter inch. And here's the seven valances that I need to make in various lengths from 27 inches to 60 inches. Now the next big challenge, in addition to just getting the lengths measured out, is to draw a gradual arc. Uh, I didn't want just a straight valance, in fact neither did my wife, but this is a trick that I've featured in other uh, publications where I'm using a plastic uh, strap that has holes drilled in it roughly every half inch. This is strapping that you use to hang overhead ductwork. I've also used wire, but that initial setup, the arc wasn't wide enough. In other words, the radius wasn't long enough. So I moved the table out. I connected that strap over to the opposite bench, which gave me that longer radius. And, and then I can draw a very gradual arc. And what I do at first to check it out is I'm leaving four inches of... Uh, square end on, on each end of this valance. So I want the arc to fit into those two four inch measurements. So now we're just cutting them to size and again a bunch of different sizes, 27 inches, there was one at 30, 31 inches another one at 50 or 51 inches and I think I had three of these at 27 inches so right now we're just cutting them to size and it occurred to me late that I probably could have pulled out the sled and helped me with navigating the straight cuts but on each one of the ends, I want the valance to stick out from the wall by five full inches. So I set up a little stop block on my mini sled, and we'll go ahead and cut out uh, basically 14 of these, or two, two of these five-inch ends per valance. And now you want to go slow. Take your time. Follow the line. I tried to make the line nice and dark so it was easy to follow with the jigsaw blade. And we've got to do this a bunch of times. Now on this particular one, this is the 27 inch one and I didn't draw three arcs. I just wanted to cut a good one and then use that as a template.
and this video is actually sped up and that'll give you some idea of how slow I went to try to get a good edge so now we're gonna get into some sanding it's time for the dust mask and while I've got the vacuum port connected to this you can't really see the hose most of the dust actually gets pulled down into this oscillating spindle sander and this was a created a video on this uh, around Christmas time uh, with some Christmas money I bought this spindle sander and I did a little bit of a review we did an assembly so you can look for that video too but I really like uh, how this thing works on inside curves like you're seeing here on these valances and so nothing too fancy in terms of the joinery here this is just going to be uh, basic pine assembled with glue and some pin nails uh, and it's really a decorative piece it's not going to hold any weight so I don't have any problem in in this type of basic assembly and we're going to stiffen up the whole uh, assembly too by inserting um, another piece of wood up in the top we'll close off the top of this uh, each valance will will have a have a, a top piece and that'll stiffen up the whole assembly and keep your nailer straight up and down <laughs> and I say that because I had a couple come out at an angle and to pull the nails and, and reshoot them and again if you just if you don't have an air nailer no biggie uh, these are just like inch and a half long brad nails and you would need to use a nail set and hide them um, below the depth of the wood so you can fill them in and paint over And here's one of the longer valances. I think this one was the 50 inch version. And now here's where we stiffen up the whole frame with this top piece. So I had enough of the 3 quarter inch pine uh, in fact, the two longer pieces, the one at 60 inches and the one at 51 inches, uh, I had some 48-inch, half-inch plywood still in the shop that I wanted to use for these smaller shelves, but the 48 inches wasn't long enough, obviously, for the 51 and the 60-inch valance, so I had additional 3 quarter inch pine that I used for those pieces. And we're just going to glue it and nail it in. And this is where my son is going to step in eventually and help out. And he'll fill up these holes. And he'll help me with the sanding and the painting. And I've got six of these to make. <laughs> so now that all seven are constructed, the last piece of trim that we're going to do on these is just to put a little bit of a routed edge on the front of these valances and this is really nothing more than a round over bit uh, we're working left to right and leaving that edge on every one of our valances and I should mention too when you're using a router uh, again you don't have to spend a ton of money to add this to your collection um, but it throws little wood chips everywhere you're gonna want some eye protection and it's always good to wear a dust mask uh, when you're using a tool like this now this is the 51 inch valance we just did the 27 inch and again I had seven of these to do and then at this point my son Matt jumped in to help out with the finish work he filled in all the little cracks again this was not premium grade lumber so you're gonna see around the knots you'll see a little crack and so forth and so he helped me fill those in in fact I can't help but telling him he missed a spot <laughs> And he'll get these painted up. And this was, uh, we sealed it, of course, with a good uh, uh, wood primer. And then we used just white semi-gloss that matched the trim 
uh, that's up at the cabin. So the valances will match all of the trim and it'll work out well. So made the trip back up to the cabin. It's still pretty frozen outside, uh, but it's time to actually hang uh, these valances. And we're going to do that with a French cleat system. So this is just two pieces of wood, or started out as one piece of wood, that we're going to cut on a 45, and you'll see that it locks in place with the way that we have it mounted. One piece is mounted to the top of the valance, one to the wall, but it allows you to take it on and off for cleaning. So this is the finished product for the 60 inch. These are two of the 27 inches in the smaller bedroom. And I have to tell you, they look great. This is the 51 inch, which is in the laundry area. And with one last parting shot, a sunset as we left for the weekend. Hey, listen, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.